There are three main ways to make an envelope style pillow. Today I'm going to walk through all three ways with you, as well as giving you a lot of helpful tips along the way. This is not your average envelope style pillow tutorial. I want you to know everything. That way once you make your pillows, you are happy with them and they last. If you check out the description below, I will have timestamps for all three tutorials there, as well as timestamps for all of my tips. The first method is the most popular method, which is cutting all of your pieces out individually because you don't need a large piece of fabric to make this particular pillow. So measure your pillow form from edge to edge. Mine is 18 inches by 18 inches and then decide if you want to account for your seam allowance or not. In this case I cut my top piece of fabric at 19 inches by 19 inches. I added an extra inch to account for a half inch seam allowance. And now it's time to do a little bit of math to figure out what size our back pieces should be. So for myself, because my pillow is 19 inches by 19 inches, I took 19 and I divided it in half, which gave me nine and a half inches. Then I added four inches to that number, which gives me 13 and a half inches. So I cut my two back pieces of fabric at 19 inches by 13 and a half inches. Then it's time to take those two back pieces of fabric and you want to press the long edge down a half an inch and then a half an inch down again. Then you will sew along that inner edge holding that hem in place. Do this for both back pieces of fabric. That way each piece has one finished edge. Now to make sure that our flaps lay over each other the right way, lay them face up on top of each other so that you know that is how the back of your pillow will look. Then lay your top piece of fabric right sides together on top of that before flipping all of that over so that you are looking at that back piece of fabric. Then you can adjust those pieces of fabric so that they line up with that top piece of fabric, pin all the way around the entire outside, and now it is time to bring it back to the sewing machine. We will sew around the entire outer edge using a half inch seam allowance. There are a few things that you should do when you are sewing around this entire outer edge. It is a good idea to do a back stitch at each corner to secure the corners in place. I also like to do a back stitch over all four of those side seams to secure them in place as well because all of these points are points that the pillow will get tugged at the most. And of course, don't forget to backstitch when you start and when you stop. There are two ways to finish your pillowcase and it really comes down to personal preference. So let's get into it. You need to stop the outer edges from fraying. So method one is cutting around the entire outer edge using pinking shears. The other method is cutting all four corners away and then sewing a zigzag stitch around the entire outer edge. Either method works, it's just up to you which you prefer. And then it's time to turn your entire project right side out and then just grab something with a pointy end. I like to use a chopstick because I use the fat end first to push out my points and then I go in very gently with the pointy your end and push out my points until they're nice and crisp. Then bring it to your iron and press all of those edges nice and flat. And this is what your finished envelope pillow cover will look like. The second pillow is this pillow here. And when you're making a long pillow, you do need to keep a few things in mind. So I'll walk you through those steps. The biggest difference between the long pillow and the square pillow will be the two pieces that you cut for the back side of your pillow. The front of your pillow will be the same. You will cut it to the same measurements as the pillow. If you want, you can add an extra inch so that you're accounting for your seam allowance. So because the width of my top piece of fabric is 24 inches in width, I have to figure out what the length of both of my back pieces of fabric are going to be. You do not want to cut both of your back pieces of fabric the same length because then when you are putting your long pillow form inside your pillow case, it will be a real struggle to get in there. So you want your folded flap closer to one of the sides of your pillow. So what I did was I took the 24 inch width and I divided it by three. That gave me eight inches. 
So for my smaller piece of fabric, I took that eight inches and I added two inches to it. So that brings me to 10 inches by 13 and a half inches. Then for my longer section, since I divided it by three, now I took eight plus eight, which brought me to 16, and I added an extra five inches to that piece of fabric, which brought me to 21 inches, so I cut a 13 and a half by 21 inch section. Then you will do the same thing for both of these pieces of fabric, except you will do it on their short ends. You will fold an edge in at a half an inch and then fold it in again another half an inch and then you will sew a seam on that inner edge. You will do this for both pieces of fabric. Then take those pieces of fabric and lay them right side up making sure that the short piece of fabric is under the long piece of fabric. Then lay the top piece of fabric right side facing down. Now you will flip everything over and adjust it so that it all lines up neatly together before pinning and finishing your pillowcase the same way that we did in method one. And this is how your long pillow will look when it's finished. And then the third pillow is this pillow here. Now this pillow uses one piece of fabric and it wraps itself all the way around. It looks like the easiest version, but this pillow is the type of pillow that actually needs the most fabric. This method works best if you are working with a small pillow because the width of most fabrics comes at 42 inches in width. So if you are working with a larger pillow, you will not be able to buy a half meter of fabric and get away with wrapping the entire pillow around. You will end up needing to buy a lot more fabric. Now, if you're doing this with two pillows, then maybe it makes sense. But for now, I'm just going to show you with this small pillow here. My small pillow is 14 inches by 14 inches. So what you will do is you will take your 14 inches by 14 inches. This time I added an inch to account for my seam allowance, which equaled 15 inches by 15 inches. And you will add that number together. So 15 plus 15 equals 30 inches. And then I added an extra eight inches to that so that my fabric will fold over itself when it's wrapped around the pillow. That brings me to 38 inches by 15 inches. Now if you want to do that cute little edging that I have there, you will add an extra inch to the width and to the length. Once you have your single piece of fabric cut, then take both short edges and press them in a half an inch and then a half an inch in again, sewing along that inner edge. Now it's time to fold the fabric over and around. So measure the height of your fabric. For myself, it's 16 inches high. So take that 16 inch height and minus an inch for the seam allowance. So you will fold your fabric over so that it is 15 inches wide and 16 inches high. Then you can sew a half inch seam allowance along both raw edges, finishing your pillow. Now before turning it right side out, you will either cut along that edge with a pair of pinking shears or zip along it with a zigzag stitch. Once you've done that, then turn it right side out, pressing those points out gently, bring it to your iron and press all four edges nice and crisp. Now is the time when if you wanted to do that fancy little decorative edge, you will sew around your entire pillow at a half inch seam allowance. I did this with a bit of a longer stitch to give it a nice clean look. Now let me tell you a few of my tips that I do personally and you can choose whether or not you're going to do it that way. The first personal preference that I have is that I actually don't account for my seam allowances. Because if I do account for that seam allowance, what tends to happen is the fluffier pillow can kind of float in that envelope style cover and I like it to be nice and poofy. Another thing I do when I'm finishing my pillow is the back seam of the pillowcase. This seam here, I like to lengthen my stitch because I find it just looks so much nicer. Another thing that I'll do, which I did not do on this pillow, but I did on this pillow and I hope that you can see it, I actually did two stitches. I find that it just gives a nicer finished look. For this particular pillow, I was working with fat quarters and I didn't have enough fabric for the back back of my pillow. So what I did was I used some Velcro tabs and I added them there. That way it didn't pull up 
and show the pillow insert. However, another method that you can do is you can just add a strip of fabric and I think it looks really nice and it goes just along there so you've given yourself that extra length. Now the one thing to note when you're doing that method, I don't mind doing it on square pillows, but on the long pillows, I don't like to do that because your long pillows, you see the seam on the top. And so if you add an extra little piece of fabric right there, it'll just look silly when it's sitting on the couch. Another thing I like to do is two different colors for the back of my fabric, which is definitely helpful if you're working with smaller pieces of fabric, then you don't need enough fabric for both sections in the same print. And I think it looks pretty cute. Another tip when it comes to these square pillows, I've seen envelope style pillows where they actually put the seam this way. And so when it sits on your couch, you can see your seam from the top and I really don't like to do that. I highly recommend making sure that your seam goes from the side to the side because you're less likely to see that when it's sitting on your couch, which just makes your pillow look that much better in my opinion. And another way that you can give your pillows a little bit more extra visual impact is by adding a binding along this seam that's contrasting to the fabric that you already have or you can actually make your pillow form bigger and then just stitch around the entire outside. I did a half inch stitch on this pillow, which gave it this really pretty look. You could even go for like a three inch and it just looks so pretty. At least I think so, what do you think? This method does work best when you're doing the whole fabric method. If you are interested in making this pillow here, I do have a tutorial for it. I will link it in the description down below as well as on the screen here. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Bye for now.